everyone this morning. And if you're a guest with us today, we're so glad to have you in service today. Thank you for being here. To those of you that are joining us online, uh, we welcome you as a part. Those of you that are a part of us and not able to be here today for various reasons, but you're joining us online. We miss you, and uh, we still got some. We've just still got some uh, folks hanging around after pause this week. It's good to have them, and um, not gonna go down the list, but I do want to acknowledge brother and sister Favors. They're missionaries to Luxembourg. And um, glad to have them with us this week. Amen. Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. I've used Daniel a couple of times here recently. And it's kind of interesting, you know. You just start seeing one thing after the other when you dig in the Word of God. So Daniel 6. I'm going to begin reading with verse number 23. Then the king was exceedingly glad for him. This is the context here. Daniel has just spent the night in the lion's den. The king has showed up and Daniel's okay. So he's he's glad about that. And he commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den. And no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. And the king commanded And they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children, their wives, and the lions, and had mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces before they ever got to the bottom of the den. Can I just pause for a moment? This just popped into my spirit. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And he says, I will repay. You can either decide that you're going to get vengeance yourself for your mistreatments and wrongs against you. Or you can just leave it in God's hands. And I'll tell you, God's way is a lot worse than your way. Verse 25. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, and steadfast forever in his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heavens and in earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Going back to verse number 26, he says, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Father, thank you so much for your presence. We have felt in this place today such a sweet and powerful way, Lord. God, I know, I believe with all of my heart that you have already ministered to hearts and lives in this place. God, there are things that you've already done in this service. We may not be able to recognize them with our natural eyes. We we may not be consciously aware of them, but in our spirits, God, we can sense and feel that you have worked and moved already. So I thank you for that. I thank you so much, God, that when we offer our praise and our worship to you, you always respond to us. And I pray, God, once again today that now through your word you would continue to minister in this service. I pray, God, that you would speak to hearts and lives here today. I pray, God, that I could simply just be a conduit, a messenger, God, that you would speak through. I trust you this morning, God. I depend upon you. I trust you for your anointing today, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I think, in fact, it was last Sunday morning that I 
read from this same chapter and used these verses, but as I was in the process of preparing and preaching and studying, verse, verse 26 just kind of stuck out and has just kind of stuck in my mind. Daniel, again, if you have heard any Bible stories at all, there's a good chance you've heard the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel spent a night in a den of lions and if you think that somehow that you know they were actually just old decrepit half dead lions the verses we just read this morning proves they were very much alive and the fact that Daniel spent the night with them and was not even scratched was a miracle because as the verse we read here says when the men that plotted to get Daniel thrown into the lion's den, them and their families were thrown in. They didn't even hit bottom before the lions began to tear them apart. So the king, the king's response, again, it's, it's interesting because the king was, he actually tried to get out of this, but a few verses before where we read the men that were a part of the plot for this decree said it's, King, if a decree's made, you can't change it. And so as he follows through with the decree, he, he, he tells Daniel, your God can deliver you. If you read the verse in the King James, it, it says it initially as a statement, but I wonder if maybe uh, it was actually a question. <laughs> you can make what is a statement, but depending on the inflection of your voice, it can become a question. I'm not so sure he said, Daniel, your God can deliver you. I think it might have been possibly, Daniel, your God can deliver you, right? (laughs) And and he kind of demonstrates that because when he comes the next morning to the lion's den where Daniel has spent the night, he he asked the question, did your God deliver you? (laughs) And he was glad when he found out that he had been delivered. But it's, it's an interesting response that King Darius has to what just took place. Because he responds and he makes a decree. I'll read you again what he says. He says that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Notice though what he said here. He didn't say that I'm making a decree that every man in my kingdom would tremble before the God. He said that they would do it before the God of Daniel. He was acknowledging that Daniel's God was a God. But he wasn't necessarily acknowledging that Daniel's God was the God. But he says that in every part of my kingdom, this this decree that men would tremble and fear before the God of Daniel because he is is the living God. Steadfast forever in his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his, his dominion shall be even unto the end. It's kind of interesting to me that that uh, he responds with this decree because it it wasn't that long before this that there was a decree that was made as well that had to do with the story of the three Hebrew children in Daniel chapter three when they were thrown into the fiery furnace and they came out of that furnace not only were they not burned not only were they not uh, uh, in pain and destroyed from it. The Bible says their, their clothes weren't burned. They didn't even smell like smoke. And so Nebuchadnezzar responds to that and he says in Daniel 3 and verse 28, Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. 
therefore I make a decree. I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dung hill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Nebuchadnezzar also recognizes that it's, it's the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and their God. He was acknowledging him to be a powerful God, but he wasn't necessarily acknowledging him to be the God. But he also makes this decree, and so we, we, we have Darius in, 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 in chapter 6 who makes this decree. It's a little bit different than the decree that Nebuchadnezzar made. Because he says that, that, that the God of everyone is supposed to tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, and, and he will be God forever. Nebuchadnezzar didn't necessarily say it the same way. He says... He just says, I'm making a decree that no one can speak against. No one can can speak amiss against the God of of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He'll be cut in pieces. In essence, what happened that caused Daniel to end up in the lion's den was there was some people that were really speaking against against. They were speaking against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who who just two kings before this king said, I'm making a decree. We'll we'll get somewhere. If I talk faster, said the same thing, but talk faster, would that make you feel better? If I spit a little bit, would that help? I'll probably end up spitting, but I won't do it right now. I am making a decree. You can't speak against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And yet these guys come along and plot that if you pray to any other God besides the king, you're going to get thrown into a lion's den, and Daniel was not the least bit bothered by what they said and did what he normally did. Continued to pray, continued to pray in the same way he normally prayed. I mean, if Daniel would have went in his basement and prayed, would you have faulted him? The Bible says he he opened his windows and did what he normally did, and that's what they were expecting. He gets delivered and Miraculously, and the king is relieved, and the king comes along with another decree. Can I tell you this? First of all, God doesn't need anybody to decree that He's God. He doesn't need the help of a human being to decree whether or not He's God. <laughs> the Bible says, Does the unbelief of some make the word of God? Of none effect. Absolutely not. Let God be true and every man a liar. You, you, God doesn't need your endorsement. God doesn't need anybody else's endorsement. And nobody else can take God off of his throne. God did not need this king to establish the fact that he was get that God was going to be king forever. But but I got a question. We, we can see from the first decree that a decree about God and who He is and what He is really doesn't seem to solve the problem. Just because the king decreed that the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was, was a God, had power, had strength and ability. Just because he did that did not mean everybody started worshiping him. In fact, it kind of appears to me that the same people who were worshiping God before Nebuchadnezzar's decree are the same people that kept worshiping him afterward. And the same people that worshiped him before Darius's decree is the same people that kept worshiping afterward. 
Because there's more needed than just a decree that he's God and you will worship him. You know, we, I just heard this just a couple of days ago. We as, uh, you know, the apostolics and speaking locally of this church, uh, uh, you know, we, we, it's been said that we are controlling. We, are, we run people's lives. I got to tell you, if I am a controlling person that is running your life, I am the biggest failure you've ever seen. I am doing a pretty stinky job at that. I can decree all I want to. That's why I had to settle, and every preacher, every pastor has to settle. At the end of the day, all I can do is declare what I believe God has given me to say. Whether you do it or not is not an indicator of my success or failure. Success is, did I sow the seed? Whether or not it was good ground, your heart was good ground, and it produced something, that's between you and God. And I've watched many times, you preach a message to one person responds one way, another person responds. I, I don't get any credit for the person that responded positively, and I don't get any blame for the person that responded negatively. Because it's got to be more than a decree. There's got to be something inside of you. You see, I'm not here today. I don't do what I do because somebody made a decree and told me that he's God. And I don't, I'm here because I have tasted and I have seen. They didn't get to it this morning, but he's sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb. I've ta- I know that. I, I don't know that. I don't just believe that because somebody decreed that to me. That's not why I'm here. I'm here because I've seen with my own eyes. I've, I've felt for myself. I've experienced it for myself. Many of you know this and you've heard me say this numerous times and I'm going to keep saying it today being another one of those times. My favorite verse my favorite verse in all of the Bible, all scripture is important. You need to respond, you need to listen, obey, trust every verse. But let's be honest, all of us have a verse that sort of speaks to us, especially at certain times. My favorite verse in all of the Bible is in Job chapter 42 and verse number 5. If you don't know anything about Job, let me just let me just I'll just simply say this. Job had the Guinness Book of World Records worst day. If you ever have are having a bad day, I'm not saying you don't and I don't have bad, but if you're ever having a bad day and need a little bit of encouragement, just go read Job chapter 1. In one day, Job lost everything, all of his possessions, but, 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 but more tragically, he lost seven sons and three daughters in one single day. And the one thing he was left with, you, thought, you would think it would have been a blessing, but it was his wife, and all she did was tell him, after she got tired of his griping and complaining, actually he wasn't really griping and complaining, but after she got tired of his, how bad everything was going, she just, this, is, this was her advice. Her advice was, why don't you just go ahead and curse God and just die? I, I'm convinced, I'm convinced, I'm convinced she had just recently been to the life insurance place and had a policy and was thinking, if I just if you'll just put me out of my misery with you, I'm gonna cash in and I'm gonna <laughs> in fact Job chapter one tells us that Job was Job was a pretty special guy. I mean he was he was a godly man, a very godly man, a very religious man, if you will. But it's at the end of all of that, it's after he goes through losing everything. That in chapter 42 and verse number 5, he says, I heard of you with my ears. But now I have seen you with my own eyes. Because a faith that is only based on hearing, which it's where all faith starts. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. But I will tell you, a faith that is based on hearing alone is a shakable faith. 
But when you get to the point that your faith is not based on just what you've heard, but it's now based on what you have seen with your own eyes, that is an unshakable faith. Because if all I've done is heard about what God can do, but I haven't seen it, the enemy can cause me to question and doubt, can he really do it? But when I have seen and I have experienced what God can do, and I've seen what he's done for me, you can't cause me to question and doubt what I know. I, I don't. Ju- I haven't just heard that God is a healer. I have experienced in my own body that He is a healer. I don't believe God's a healer today because there's a decree that says God is a healer. I believe today God is a healer because I've seen it for myself. I've experienced it for myself. And I've come to challenge somebody today. Maybe you're here or maybe you're doing what you're doing because there's some decrees. But I'm going to tell you that won't last. There's got to be a point where you taste and you see, you experience for yourself. Acts chapter number 17, the Bible says this, verse 22, Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and I beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Whom therefore you ignorantly worship. I, 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 I think in, in essence you could say Paul was saying kudos to you. You, gotta, you. you are acknowledging that there's a God. You are acknowledging that there is a God. And, and, and you are even worshiping Him. But he's an unknown God. And so you're worshiping him ignorantly. And he says, but I've come to declare him to you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. It's kind of funny when the person that's only being able to talk because of the God says, I'm, dec- I'm decreeing there's a God. <laughs> he says the, he, he, he's the God that made all things. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord if haply they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of your own poets have said for we also are his offspring the kings that I read to you about in Daniel in the book of Daniel they were referencing the three Hebrew children's gods Daniel's God it's a little different here because in this situation they are acknowledging that there is a God we, we don't know Him. We're not really sure exactly who He is. We, we don't really know everything about Him, but we do acknowledge that there is a God. And so now the one speaking is not simply speaking from a position of observing what that God has done for others. He's now saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to decree, but I'm not decreeing to you about who your God is. I want to tell you about this God. The God in whom we live and move and have our being. See, it's just, just, it's not enough for there to be a, a decree. It's not enough for there to be some statement that there is a God and you would no. Because God, it, this is interesting to me, and I, I don't, I'm just going to scratch the surface of this, but it's in the Old Testament where we're given the law. 
God gave the children of Israel the law, we, we refer oftentimes primarily to the Ten Commandments. But if you read the Bible, God gave them way more than Ten Commandments. He gave them over 500 commandments. The interesting thing about those commandments is they, they covered every aspect of life. Covered how they conducted themselves with business. They covered, it, it covered what they wore, what they ate. It, 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 it covered everything. There's actually one of those, one of the laws, this is literally one of the laws that God gave them was, if you have a house that has a flat roof on it, put a fence around the roof. To keep people from falling off, basically. He gave them the law. He, he gave them a decree. Knowing, you see, he, he didn't do this like, oh man, I messed up. He knew in advance. He told them, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. You're not, you, you can't have any other gods before you. That was the law. That was the decree. Read throughout the Old Testament and see how effective that was. And that wasn't, that wasn't just coming from an earthly king. That was, that was coming from the king of kings. That was coming from the, the, the creator gave all of those laws. And yet that was not enough. But the New Testament tells us that grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Because God knew in advance the law was not going to cause us to do what we should do, even though the law should cause us to do what we should do. There had to be something more than just a, a, a head knowledge of what is decreed. There had to be a relationship. There, there had to be a connection that they had. John chapter 12 and verse number 20 says this, And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida, of Galilee and desired him saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. These guys weren't just responding to a decree. They, they weren't just on a mission because it had been decreed what was happening. There was this desire inside of them that said, We, we want to see Jesus for ourselves. We, we, we want to have an encounter with Him for ourselves. We're not just here. We, we've come to this feast. We've come to worship at this feast. But, but there's something down inside of us that's looking for more than just going through some kind of religious activity. There, there's something inside of us that, yeah, I, I acknowledge that, that I should worship this God. But I want to do more than just worship this God out of obligation and ritual and, and out of some kind of a duty. I want it to be based upon a relationship, a connection that I have with Him. You know, it just seems to me whenever you've got to try to get someone, whether it's a, you know, a spouse or a child or a parent or a friend, whatever, if you've got to somehow, uh, if, if you've got to coerce them into telling you they love you, it's just not the same. It's just not the same. There, there, there's a difference between when I tell my wife voluntarily, you, you look good today. I like that outfit versus when she's asking, is it, it, it just not the same. This book is full from front to back. It's full of commands. It's full of instructions. You know what? I, I stood... Uh, not really familiar with, with this this property out there to my right neck over there. There's a slab and 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 uh, there's a you can still see kind of a concrete structure block structure back there and and years ago that was that was a gymatorium and that's where we had church services and and uh, the platform was up by that back wall and I stood on that 
platform 30 plus years ago. And I made vows to my wife. I made commitments of what I would do, how I would love her, for better for worse, for richer for poor, in sickness and in health. Forsaking all others, will you keep yourself for her only? So long as you both shall live, I will. And she did the same thing. Those were, those were decrees, basically. We didn't just celebrate 30 years of marriage in May because of decrees. That, that may have been a part of what needed to happen. And, and, and you know what? Yeah, there had been a time or two where things were not going as wonderfully as we would have liked. And, and there was a little bit of motivation that, you know what, we, we made a commitment. But rarely am I staying in the relationship with her because I made vows one day. Most days I don't even think about those vows. Because there, there, there's something that's been built between us. You're only going to be a part of religion and church and whatever other thing you want to call it for so long if it's just built on decrees. You know what? It may start there. You may start out of, a, out of an obligatory response. But at some point there's got to come a connection. There's some, there's, there's some point at which it's got to become a personal, real thing to you. Because I'm not doing what I do today because of the laws and decrees. D does that affect me? Absolutely. But I'm here because at some point I, I, I started finding out there that this unknown God can be a known God. That the God that everybody may acknowledge can be my God. The Bible says in Matthew 16 and verse 13, And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say you are John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He asked them, I'm getting ready to read the second question in a moment. He asks them two questions, but it's, I think the sequence of the questions is extremely important. Because this first question says, I, tell me what everybody else is saying about me. Tell me, tell me what the rumor, tell me what the word on the street is about me. And they stood there with him and, and out loud confessed the things that they knew Others were saying. He, he had them verbalize out loud what is being said about. I got a question today. How many of you know some of the things that are being said out there about Jesus? Just get on Facebook for a little bit. You, you know, you hear. How many of you college students know what they say about Jesus? They're not saying the same thing about Jesus that I'm saying about Jesus. You're not hearing out there the same thing about Jesus that you're hearing in here. And so he, he had them state that because he, he wanted to make this point because he then says this, Who do you say that I am? And after having stated who others were saying he was, Simon Peter responds and says, I think think I think there's a slight chance you might be the Messiah. I'm 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 considering that there is this possibility that that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Are you are you reading as as my dad would say Sarcasm alert. <laughs> no. He responds without hesitation. He responds without wavering and says, Thou art the Christ, the Son 
of the living God. Yeah, Jesus, I've heard everything they say. I've heard all of their opinions. I've heard the good and the bad. I've heard the positive and the negative. But I just want you to know none of that sways me. I know you are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God. Because if your faith is only based on a decree, you don't give a positive affirming response. But when your faith is based on a relationship, let everybody else say what they want to say. I know who you are. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Oh, you can make up your mind that you're going to listen to what you're hearing from the world. You can determine that that's going to be your source of information. I don't, I, don't, I don't spend hardly any time each day on the news. I don't watch the news on TV. At most what I do, and some days I don't even do this, is I give about a 60 or 90 second scan of, of Fox News app on my phone of what the headlines are. I, if, if, I, if that bothers you as the leader of this flock, that that's my approach, oh well. Because where is all of your knowledge of everything that's going on getting you? All of the information that you're taking in and all of the knowledge that you're gaining from everything you're listening and reading and watching, where, where is it getting you? Anxiety, worry, fear, doubt, unbelief, lack of trust in God. You say, well, you need to know what's going on. Why? What good is that doing you? You need to be aware. Why? I don't need to be aware. There's one person that needs to be aware. And the one person that needs to be aware is the person that's never bothered by any of it. I, I just read the other day. I just read the other day all over again. It's, it's, in, it's in the book of Romans. Where, where, where. God, you, it's, it, Paul stated clearly, God, God used the Pharaohs. God, God used them for His purpose. Well, I think this party ought to be in the White House. I think that party ought to be in the White House. What if the party you want in the White House doesn't fit God's purposes? The bottom line, who has, whoever's there... They're not in control. I hear some of you, some of you folks are saying, you're absolutely right. I don't mean that the same reason you're saying. And that's the I had somebody get I had somebody a couple years ago seem to be a slightly irritated because I didn't I didn't know and believe and whatever. At, at the end of the day, if if mankind is doing and causing the natural disasters, at the, at the, what am I going to do about it? i tell you what I'm going to do about it. I'm going to put my trust in the one that's in control of it all. Bishop read it, I think Bishop read it just a couple of nights ago, if I'm not mistaken, it was him. It, it, it's in, I think it's in Colossians. that It says, by him were all things created. All things. That means there's nothing that's out of his control. As far as the circumstances and events of this world. Now, I, I think I can say it this way. There is something that can be out of his control. The person you look in the mirror at. But all this other stuff. We, man, it is it's so, I don't even why I know, I, there's plenty of other examples I could use. I don't know why I'm about to use this one, but I am. It, it, I just, and as I'm about to say it, I've just realized how wonderful it is. I don't, we, we can go services and services and services now without the C word. 
we went forever where it seemed like every single service somehow the C word was mentioned. I, I, I don't care if COVID came from a bat and a la- I don't care where, I don't care. I don't care. God could have killed the bat. Am I going to sit around and fret over something that's supposed to be? The problem is anytime you and I are fretting over something, what we are acknowledging is is a lack of trust in God. Because he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it will not come nigh thee. Well, what about the fact people got sick with COVID and some people died? Exactly. What about it? I'll tell you what about it. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after that cometh the judgment. So God may have decided it was a car accident for one and COVID for another one. I'm not going to sit around and worry about that. I'm going to trust the fact that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That's not based on a decree. That's not based on some intellectual knowledge somebody's given. It's the fact that I know for myself. I've tried him for myself. And I found out he's real. He's true. He's trustworthy. The old song says, I tried him and I found out. He's all right with me. I tried him. He's just all right. And that, I know sometimes you go, how is it? It's all right. That's not. You know, when we say, what do you think about Jesus? Some of you are like, he's all right. Of course, it might be that it's not spelled A-L-R-I-G-H-T. It could be that he's A-L-L-R-I. G-H-T. He's all right. Solomon said it like this. He got through this whole crazy poetic description of God and who He is and what He's all about. And finally, he summed it all up by saying this. You're just all together lovely. After I've tried all of these other things to say about you, all I can do is just say this. Everything about you is good. It doesn't matter how high I investigate, how low I go. You're all right. Oh, taste and see. Taste and see. That the Lord is good. Don't just take somebody else's word for it. Don't just follow a decree. Taste and see. Find out for yourself. Let somebody else's report of God stir up your faith and your interest, but find out for yourself. Find out for yourself. You know what, there's some things, I think it's all right. just take somebody else's word for it. That's okay. That's some things, I think it's okay. Really, I do. But I'm going to tell you, when it comes to Him, I don't care if it's just the king's decree. Or I don't care if it is the king's decree. You you, you need to find out for yourself. That's part of the danger of what happens for, for kids, young people that are raised in church. They never get their own taste. You're only going to stick around for so long based on somebody else's taste. You're, you're only going to be faithful for so long if it's somebody else. How, how in the world? There, there's, there's some very tragic things throughout all of Scripture. But one of the most tragic things to me in all of Scripture, the Bible says, I think it's in the book of Judges, that after Joshua, there arose a generation that knew not God. 
I have a question this morning. How, how many of you believe the stories in this book and you believe they're real, they happen, they're true? How many of you, there, you don't, there, there's no doubt, there, you, there's no hesitation, you don't, there's not one, you don't think it's fiction, you don't think it's, how many, one more time, how many of you believe it? How, how many of you, you believe, you believe it without the shadow of a doubt? How many of you? I'm not setting you up, I'm not setting you up, so. Some of you getting a little pause is over. I mean, you, you, you believe it. I believe you believe it. I'm not asking you this because I'm, I'm, I'm setting you up, but I'm setting you up in a good way. So, you believe it. You, be, you believe it. You, be, you be, How many of you believe of uh, this great fish swallowed a man, and for three days that man was stuck inside of that fish, and then that fish spit him up? How many of you you believe that? Have you believed that a that that a, that an army of men for six days walked around walls of a city one time a day, said nothing, and then on the seventh day they walked around that city seven times and the walls fell and God? How many of you believe that actually happened? How many of you believe that three guys spent time in a fiery furnace that was turned up so hot that it killed the people throwing them in and yet they came out of it absolutely untouched how many of you believe that's crazy stuff if you're not listening to your to me and you're that's crazy stuff you believe a guy spent the night in a den of hungry lions and they didn't touch him you you really believe that you, you believe this man took five small pieces of bread and two small fishes and fed 5,000 plus people from that to the point they didn't just get a snack, they were full and then there was leftovers you, you really believe you believe that same guy walked on water believe that same guy said to people with blind eyes to be open and they saw and deaf ears to be unstopped and lame people to walk and they walked and dead people to be you, you believe that what is amazing is you believe all of that and it happened thousands of years ago and yet you sit here today and believe that it's absolutely real Joshua was one of the ones that walked out of Egypt through the Red Sea, walked around the wilderness, watched manna fall from heaven day after day, water come out of a rock, all this stuff. And so there were others with him that didn't just hear, they saw with their own eyes the people that that verse is talking about, the generation that arose that knew not God, had parents and grandparents that weren't just telling them some old wives' tale. They were, they were able to describe what it was like to walk through a sea and the ground was dry. And you should have seen the walls of water that there was no explanation as to how they were standing. And, and as millions of people walked through and, 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 and then when we finally got through, there was an army that was coming after us that we had no place to go. And the same water that was parted for us to walk through all of a sudden came back together and drowned all of them. It, it's funny because I've heard it said that, you know, the skeptics say that the place that they supposedly walked through on the, on, on, on the, on the Red Sea was like, you know, ankle deep. Okay. Then, if it was only ankle deep water, that doesn't lessen the miracle because how does an entire army get drowned in ankle deep water? Nice try. They, they, they had heard first-hand accounts. Humor me for a moment. I, 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 
out of all the places I've ever had the chance to go, and I've been to some amazing places, I'm not prepared to say it is the top place, but pretty close to the top is, is uh, Yosemite. And in particular, El Capitan. And part of it's, part of it's the beauty of it, but it, it's also never seen the documentary Free Solo it's pretty amazing you know what there's I got a picture if you haven't if you want to see it come come see it in my office Nathaniel took the picture he had it blown up printed up for my birthday or Christmas something it's on my wall it's a beautiful picture you can get it but there it, it's not the same as standing there and looking up see just not the same if I had the best of vocabularies I could not properly describe it it didn't matter how great their parents or grandparents could describe the experience of walking through the Red Sea unless they had their own use others, but he's right here, standing here, so I'll use him. Got got grandparents. Came before he was ever born, before his parents were ever even married. You know what? I've watched a change in you the last several months at least. You know what the change is? This isn't John and Luann's. It's not Kevin and Amy. Becoming Declan. And here's, here's what absolutely blows my mind. I, I for those of you that are guests, my my grandmother's in her 90s now. She's sitting here. She's been in church since she was a young person. My parents now here. And now I've got I've got children here. The reason it keeps going from a generation to a generation is not because what my grandmother decreed. It's because, yeah, she may have declared some things, but then my mom came along and she started experiencing. And now I, then I came along and I'm experiencing. And now my kids came along and they're experiencing. Here's the thing that's so amazing. As much as you may want to experience Him for yourself, as intense of a desire as you might have to experience Him and taste and see for yourself, what is so reassuring is His desire for you to do that far exceeds. You know what? God is the gentleman of gentlemen. He's not the police that comes and busts through your door. Doesn't blow up the entryway to get in. Revelation chapter 3, it says it this way. He says this, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Now, this is my interpretation of that verse, so hear me. I'm not proclaiming that it's the way, but this, this is the way I imagine that verse is that he stands at the door and knocks. That he doesn't stand at the door and beat. He stands there and he knocks. In fact, I think most of the time he knocks so quietly that unless you pause for a moment and listen, you will miss the fact that he's knocking. Unless you kind of tune out all the other noise, you'll miss that the God of this world is at the doorstep of your heart 
saying, I, I would like to come in. I'd like to spend some time with you. I'd like to fellowship with you. I'd like for you to, you know, if I came up to you after services, say, you know, especially if you were a guest, I'll just pick on another front row guy here. If I came up to Tommy and said, you know, Tommy, I would really love for you to get to know me. I mean, what kind of an arrogant dude are you? I just think you would be so blessed if you got to know me. I just think the greatest experience of your life would be, what in the world? But the God of this world is saying, I... I'd like to get to know you. Of course, he already knows us. But I'd like for you to get. I'm not interested in you learning how to check off boxes on a religious checklist. I want you to get to know me. Because if you get to know me, all that other stuff, you won't even. You won't even think twice about it said it before. I'm, I'm trying to quit. I, I, there, there's, there, there are, I, I, I still squeeze a few by. But there's, there's some things I would wear if it was just up to me. But I got this other person in my life. That there have been some of those things I had this shirt years ago somebody gave me. I thought it was a cool shirt. It's just like, it looks like drapes. Okay, drapes can look good too. The most, the most notable one is the one that sticked out. I, I had this kind of a burnt orange jacket, solid color jacket. Man, I thought it was, she couldn't stand it. I should have got rid of it sooner than I did. But I, you know, I I don't I don't I don't try to submit for the most part. Actually, I'm not submitting. I I don't try to please her. Because I said I do. I please her cuz I've got this relationship Next to Jesus, I, it, I'm, it, what you think matters to me. I, 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 I'm still, as we heard about this week, I got some things that still need to die. But besides Jesus, besides Jesus, there's one person in this world that matters to most what they think. That, that's my wife. matters the most to him because there's some decree that he's God and you better are you kidding absolutely not I do it because he's so sweet I do it because he's so kind I do it because he's so merciful I do it because he's so loving do it because he's so gracious I do it because he's been so good to me beyond anything I could ever and when I keep doing dumb stuff that I shouldn't do he just keeps loving me there's probably some folks here this morning that you're still just kind of living off of a decree God wants to take you beyond that God wants to take you beyond that. Would you just, for right now at least, just right where you are, would you just, just bow your head, close your eyes? Would you just, just open your heart to Him, open your spirit to Him right now? Again, if you're looking for something to just knock you off your feet right now, it it could happen, but I really don't. 
expect that to happen. More so what you might just recognize is just kind of that, that gentle assurance. That calm assurance. That he's right there. He's with you. Father, I pray right now for every person in this sanctuary. God, whether it's those who have come for years and years, decades and decades, or if it's somebody that today is their very first time. This would be way more than a response to some kind of a decree, declaration. But that God, there would be a personal individual experience with you. That someone would know today what it's like to open the door of their heart and for you to come in and fellowship with them, sup with them, spend time with them, dwell in them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if if you're in this place this morning and you can just feel that tug, maybe you need to take your response a little bit further rather than just sitting where you are as a, as a step of faith, as a step of a demonstration of your desire, your hunger. I'd invite you just to get up from where you're sitting and make your way down to the front here as a as an outward demonstration of an inward desire. Lord, I, I don't want to just be responding to a decree. If a decree worked, the king wouldn't have had to have made another decree after Daniel came out of the lion's den. The, the other one would have been good enough, but it wasn't enough. There had to be a personal connection, relationship, knowledge, knowing Him for yourself, tasting and seeing for yourself that He's good. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, Your Word tells us that You're no respecter of persons. What You do, what You've done for one, You're willing to do for any of us pray, Father, right now for any person in this place today that may be battling fear, may be fearing that you will reject them. I pray, God, that you would replace that fear with faith. Faith, Lord, that you will respond to every one of us. Faith, God, that what you've done for one, you'll do for me. What you've done for somebody else, you're willing to do for me. The taste that you've given to others, you'll give me a taste, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I don't want you just to be an unknown God in my life, an acknowledgement that there is a God, a belief that there is a God, but not really knowing that God. Lord, for anybody in this place today that you're the unknown God, they've, they've set aside a place for you in their lives, Lord. They've made a space for you, God. They're, they're recognizing you there. There's just not that personal experience. Would you make yourself known to every one of us today? In the name of Jesus. If I could ask you to do this, if you'd just stand right where you are and if you would just reach over, grab a hand, put a hand on somebody's shoulder. Could we just, just take a moment here right now and pray one for another? Maybe, maybe that person beside you is struggling with their own faith right now to reach out. And the Lord could use you right now. Father, touch, minister. Prove yourself, Lord. Not that, not that you should have to. 
Not that there's a reason why you should. I, I know, Lord, that we should just simply take your word for what it says. I understand, God, that we should just simply believe based on your word. But you're such a kind, loving, gracious God. You're willing to prove to us. You're willing to demonstrate to us. You're there. You're a God that is not distant somewhere off in space, but you're a God that is nearby. You are, you are a God who is touched by the feeling of our infirmities. You're a friend that sticks closer than a brother. You're the good shepherd that leads us through the valley of the shadow of death. Lord, you're the beginning and the ending. You're the first, the last. You're the almighty God. You're the everlasting Father. You're the Prince of Peace. You're the wonderful Counselor. You're the great I Am, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray today, God, as Job was able to say, you would bring us to the place that we are able to say, I've heard about you. I've heard others talk about you. I've heard others testify about you. I've heard others witness about you. I've heard of you, but now, God, now, now I've seen for myself, I've experienced for myself what you can do. I'm not just taking somebody else's word for it. I'm not just living off of somebody else's testimony, but now, God, it's, it's my own testimony that you've given to me. It's my own valleys that you've been the shepherd that has led me through. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. And uh, if, you're, if you're a guest today and what you've heard is a desire of your heart. You want to you wanna know Him more. You want to know Him for yourself. We are here to do whatever we can to help make that possible. And uh, there's an area back to my left. Somebody will be back there if you want to talk to somebody about what you can do to grow and know Him more. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Hope to see you this evening if you're able to come in Jesus' name.